most of my students are working towards a specific musical goal, a performance or an audition, preparing for a wonderful musical experience, a festival, a competition, a concert or a recital. You might be preparing a college entrance recording or an audition, um, or possibly a professional orchestral audition. As you prepare for that audition, you naturally are going to focus on things that you know the judges will be looking for, such as your ability to play all the pitches accurately, to produce beautiful tone, to play the rhythms as they're written, to play the dynamics as they're written by the composer, or to execute articulations and slurs as they're written in the official edition. But you might be overlooking a most important factor. Can you perform consistently at this audition, facing the judges or in front of a live audience, some of whom might be very critical listeners? In short, are you well enough prepared? If you've played many auditions or concerts already, you know that when you begin playing, you might feel normal, but as you continue performing, your nervous system sometimes begins to send fight or flight signals from your brain, and your adrenal gland begins producing adrenaline, which is designed to make it possible for you to run really fast or do acts of great strength. Problem is, when you're playing the violin, you need fine motor coordination in order to play the violin accurately, not the usage of gross motor large muscle groups that you would use for running, jumping, or hitting a big beast. Your fine motor coordination may begin to become uncoordinated. You might become distracted you may begin thinking things that are irrelevant to your violin playing. We can rehearse the mental and physical skills that we need in order to counter these problems. We can work with our teachers to develop strong skills that will overwhelm the effects of nerves. But the body and the mind needs to practice dealing with the adrenaline before the audition so that they can adjust correctly and that you can continue performing at your usual high level without any interruptions or annoyance of jittery bows, wobbly vibrato, missed shifts, or memory slips, for instance. We have to make ourselves nervous on purpose to practice dealing with the nerves. We make ourselves nervous in our practice session and then re-perform that music that we've been practicing so much. So we need to create a situation where you can perform in front of a live critical audience. If you participate in an auditioner's master class You'll be playing in front of other musicians who know the music, who are familiar with it, who know what it's supposed to sound like. Perhaps your parents, perhaps relatives, friends, and strangers, and of course in front of a master teacher, and sometimes visiting music teachers or other specialists that can, again, be highly critical of your performance. We don't need people who are just going to say, oh, it was great. That doesn't really help us. We need people who will be critical. And those people might tend us, make us more nervous. That's good, because we need to practice being nervous so that we'll understand later on, when we actually do the real audition, how our bodies and our minds are going to work with our nerves. After you perform your solo 
unaccompanied violin piece, which is what's commonly expected for things like district auditions, uh, such as the ones that are sponsored by MMEA, the Massachusetts Music Educators Association, just for an example. I'll review the comments on the assessment sheet where I've written the observations of what you did well and what you did not do well. Suggestions for improvements will be offered, and you'll have the opportunity to try out some of these ideas for improving your performance. Again, in front of your audience. So you're practicing improving in front of an audience. The audience, too, will be taking notes themselves. And after everyone who is playing in the violin masterclass has had a chance to undergo this same process, performing, then getting a master critique, then the audience will vote for their favorite performer in a poll. The winner of the poll will get a month of free lessons, by the way. And the assessment sheets that you'll get from the masterclass can be brought to your regular teacher to get additional help in organizing your very best audition performance. By the way, if you are the winner and you don't want to take those lessons, you can always schedule yourself for another next master class for free. Uh, so the auditioner's master classes will be held twice a month, once in Easton, Massachusetts, and once in Newton, Massachusetts. Before we start, doing these master classes, though, it is really crucial that we have enough people in the audience to make this experience realistic and successful for you. So I'd like to ask, if you're listening to this video, please fill out the survey that I'm including and let me know what time and day you would prefer. So this is a poll of all the people that might participate in this so that we can work out a schedule that will benefit the maximum number of students that are interested in participating. Alternatively, you can just check off one or more of the preset dates.